Here's the letters I brought for the rabbits. You signed for it? Five grand in pension twenties. genuine warranted tea room. A phone call from a throaty voice owned by a gal named Tirana, and I was on my way. How could I resist? Personally, I beat many a knife and fork together involving time, effort, and not to mention money in an assortment of gilded cages, automats, ferry boat lunch counters, and various kitchens. I can take them as they fall. Besides, I figured it was about time to check on how my tea leaves had been falling lately. What you got here, huh? Got a fortune, huh? Oh, my goodness, what does this say? Da -cha 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 -cha. You were beloved for your kind disposition and peaceful ways. Are you kidding? Too much so, perhaps, for your own good. <laughs> Do not let people take advantage of you. Well, here you go. There you go. Payday. All right? Well, you're a pretty cute fellow, aren't you? What's, uh, what's his name? Her name is Banjo. Oh, her name. <laughs> well, I'm not very much of an expert on monkeys. Tell me, where can I find Miss Tirana? Over there. The one with the cards? That's right. Miss Tirana? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm Mike Hammer. Oh, I have been expecting you. Excuse me, please. Yes, well, it looks like today's my lucky day. Well, I mean, uh, when I accept the client by phone, it's nice they turn out so uh, nice. <laughs> I don't have to be a gypsy fortune teller to know that you have an Irish line. Oh, come on now, it ain't it ain't all so dull. It was very good of you to come. I just couldn't get away. But it's urgent, Mr. Hammer. No, no, the name's Mike. Mike, have you read the papers about my fiancé, Coleca Haxi? Well, yeah, I read the papers, but uh, I don't remember reading his name. I guess it is not that important. To Carl and I, it's the most important thing in the world. We were going to be married. Oh. Well, uh, tell me about... Uh, uh, what's his name? Kaleke? Uh, Carl? Carl. He calls himself Carl. Oh, I see. The police are holding him as an accessory to a murder and hold up. Where? Here, in New York, the Doppel currency exchange. Tom Doppel was shot and killed. Carl works for him as a messenger. He was there when it happened. Well, you know, the uh, police usually have a, a pretty good reason for charging a man. Oh, yes, but they don't know Carl. You know, Carl is a good man, kind and honest. He's never been in trouble before, ever. And he has a fine record. Uh, what does he say? Oh, I've been to see him, and he just won't talk about it. Not a word. Not a word, huh? Well, it seems to me that what he needs is a good attorney instead of a private detective. Oh, that's just it. He won't talk to an attorney either. But he says he isn't guilty, and I believe him. Then I don't know quite what I can do. Well, I know. You talk to him. Perhaps you can make him talk. Tell him, tell him that you will help him. Here. Here, right. I have some money that he and I saved. I can't promise you a thing, Tyrone. This is a great deal of money. It, it may be all for nothing. What good is money without Carl? Help him, Mike. Please do everything you can to help him. Please. I'll talk to him. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. Thank you, Mike. Uh, incidentally, here. Uh, you better take this back. You uh, overpaid me. It's over union scale. Keep this polished. Huh? We may need it. I got permission from Pat Chambers at Homicide to take a look at the currency exchange setup. There was absolutely
absolutely no way for anyone to enter that door unless he was buzzed in. It might have been Tom Doppel, but why would he rob his own joint and get killed for his trouble? The fingers seemed to point pretty squarely at Carl Hoxie, who had just delivered the dough. Chambers told me that Carl had clammed up with the cops too. No explanation, no alibi, no defense. It almost seemed as if Carl Haxey was deliberately going out of his way to ask for the rap. So my next stop was the tombs, aptly named for a guy who wouldn't talk. What do you want now? What do I want now? I never laid eyes on you before in my life. You're another cop that's enough. No, no, I'm not a cop. I'm a private investigator hired by your girlfriend to help you out. My name's Hammer. Oh? You better go back and tell Tirana to save the dough. Nobody could help me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, maybe you're right. Nobody can help you. But as a lead pipe cinch, the cops don't need any help. I was on the currency exchange. Looks like they got a pretty good case together. They can't give me that chair. Oh, please. You're an attorney, too. I didn't know that. I don't have to be an attorney. It's all circumstantial. Circumstantial? Why well, argue? But I'll take all bets. I know your permanent address for the next 50 years. That's the way it is. That's it. You got nothing else to say? Nothing. But you're innocent. You had nothing to do with the robbery or the killing. I told you I don't want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I heard you say that. But I'm, uh, I'm real curious. That's how those two rods got through that locked door. I don't know. Now leave me alone. I tell you to get this guy out of here. Listen, Buster, I can't help you if you won't help me. But let's get just one thing straight. Tarana hired me, and she can fire me, but not you. Yeah, I'm sorry for Tarana. Just time to forget it. What about the rest of your family? I don't have any family. Except a brother, and he doesn't count. No. Why not? Have you talked to him? No. Any reason not to? None. What's his name? Vanek. Van. Now, that's it. I got nothing more to say. You're wasting your time. I'd heard Tirana's story and Carl's lack of story. I was interested in what brother Van Haxey had to say. There was a listing for K and V Haxey in a neighborhood that had seen better days. brother. Yeah, I remember you down in the tea room with the monkey. Yeah, that's me. And you're the private Dick Tirana hired. That's right, that's me. Well, now we've introduced ourselves. Can I come in? Well... well if you knew I was hired to help your brother, why didn't you say something? I didn't hire you. Look, what's on your mind? I got a guy coming around, so make it snappy. Okay. I just talked to your brother. I understand you haven't been down to see him yet. No. Why not? What's to see him about? What's to see him? Well, for one thing, his life. Ah, uh, he doesn't want to see me. Oh, he doesn't, huh? No. Nobody wants to see me, get it? Well, no, no, I'm afraid I don't. What do you want, hammer a drawing? I got a gimp. And look at this face. Everybody's tired of it. Including me. You're the first one to mention it. Am I? So I say it. The others are thinking it. They're thinking it all the time. Why do you think I grind an organ and fool around with a monkey for a few lousy pieces of silver? Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank the lady banjo. Thank them for what? So they can feel superior? Then why do you do it? What? Why? I'll tell you, Mr. Hammer. Because nobody will give me a job. A real job. Nobody wants me around. <laughs> Come 
crazy, Banjo. Gotta be careful that she doesn't run out the door. Why, well, no, she appears pretty well trained to me. Oh, Banjo's all right. Just gotta be careful not to lose my business partner. <laughs> I didn't expect you so soon. Look, uh, I'll see you later. Come off it. Who do you think you're talking to, Kempy? I got company. Yeah, that's right. He's got company, but don't let me break anything up. Come on in. Who are you? Me? I'm the company. What's on your calendar? Pool. I like to play pool. You know, I used to chalk up a pretty good cue myself. How about getting up a game, huh? Oh, I don't do it for fun. I shoot for dough. Suits me just fine. You set the limit, huh? Well, we start at a quarter a point, and we work our way up. I'm trying to say, Gobo, this is Mike Hammer, a detective hired to help Carl. Yeah, that's right, Gobo. Hey, you friend of Carl's? No, I don't know him. Look, Hammer and I got more important things to talk about oh, than three cushions. Forget it, Van. Forget it. Come on in, Gobo. No, no. <laughs> You got things to talk about? I'll blow. Yeah, well, uh, uh, don't forget the game, huh? Who was a creep? I seem to know him pretty well. He's a guy I run into once in a while. He's good for a game or two when there's nothing else to do. Yeah, he's no friend of Carl's, huh? No, he isn't. Carl doesn't seem to have very many friends, does he? I wouldn't know. I mean, even you're not really a friend of Carl's, are you, Van? Carl can take care of himself. Yeah. Yeah, Van, I guess you're right. And I got a hunch that's just exactly what Carl's going to do. He's going to take care of himself and other people, too. It's Carl's mess. <laughs> that's right, and he's in it right up to his eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, that poor fool, he thinks he's going to get off with life. What's so funny about that? Because that's not the way it's going to work out at all. He's going to get the chair. And maybe, for a guy who doesn't have any friends, maybe that's the best thing after all. You really think he's going to burn? Of course he is. Unless he talks. And he won't do that. You know, Van, I don't have rheumatism, but I got a funny feeling in my bones that tells me that dear, poor, stupid, friendless old Carl is covering up for somebody. Uh, you're just talking. Yeah, that's right. I'm just talking, but I'm talking sense, and you know it. You know something that could help Carl. What are you going to do? Just stand still and watch him fry? I... It isn't that bad. Oh, it's, it is that bad. And all it takes is just a couple of words, just a few words. It'll help your brother off the hook. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to speak up, Van? Or... Or, or what? Or are you going to alibi yourself for the rest of your life? Ask yourself every night, why didn't I speak up when I could? Why didn't I save my brother? Why, Van? I don't know. Come on, boy. Come clean now. Well, I... No, I can't do it. Not now. Come on, now's the time. I can't do it now. Maybe I do know a little something that could help, but you got to give me time. Time? Time's what your brother's running out of. Talk now, no, boy. No, 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 no. No, you, you, you got to do it my way. I, I got reasons, good reasons. Go on. Then you get rough with me and I'll claim up for good. All right, Van, you make the rules. I'll keep them and so will you. All right. I'll be at your office first thing in the morning. Where do I get you? Right here. Nine o'clock. Yeah, yeah, nine. And don't keep me waiting. Comfortable chair. I've been a busy little bee. Have you found out anything? Will you be able to help me? Well, I think so, but I'll know more about it tomorrow. Oh, Mike, I'm so happy. Don't feel happy. You know the old gypsy saying about counting your chickens. Oh, certainly. Th then you know how many chickens are in the pot? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, that's not quite the way I heard it. I just had a talk with Van. Tell me about him. Oh, he's... Uh... Why didn't you tell me about him when I was first here? No reason. I just... Didn't think about it. You don't like him very much now, do you? Well, you, you spoke to Van. You should know. Uh, there's more to it than that now, isn't there? Huh? Hmm? Yes. Uh, that was before I met Carl. I knew Van. He liked me. Sometimes he asked me to go out. I, uh, I felt sorry for him. But I just couldn't bear the idea of going out with him. Mm -hmm. So? So, one night... Carl 
came down to this place. And I met him. And it was different. Mm -hmm. And that made Van sore, huh? Not sore. Hurt. For a long time, he wouldn't speak to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. Do you know, uh, do you know one of Van's friends named, uh, Gobo? Gobo McCoy? Uh, yes, he plays billiards with Van and another man. Another man, huh? Who? Uh, a guy called Vetters. Carl didn't like them. They spent a lot of time together at the Ivory Pool Room. Why? Uh, no reason, just wondering. I met Gobo this afternoon. I'm, uh, I'm kind of inclined to agree with Carl. About what? I don't like Gobo either. Came the dawn. Also, sometime later, 9 o'clock, then 10, but no van. I was beginning to worry and started to kick myself for not making him talk more when I had him on the run. But a twisted guy like Vanek can get awfully stubborn too, and I thought I'd give him a chance to play it his way. Now it was time to play it my way. Van's murder with Pat Chambers and then ducked as fast as I could. My next step was to pick up Tirana and then see Carl Haxey. Tell us about that morning, Carl. Tell us. I looked up and saw a banjo coming through the grill of the window. And then I recognized it and I realized Van had something to do with it. Couldn't you stop the monkey? No. Just then there was a buzzer and banjo clicked the door open like a flash. The poor little animal. She didn't know any better. She had been trained that way. Trained, huh? Eh? Yes. We trained her at the house. I thought it was just to answer doorbells. But Van was serious, and I didn't know it. Mike, do you think Van felt sorry and killed himself? Well, I think Van was sorry, but I don't think he shot himself. No, I think his two chums did that. And he told them that he was going to clear Carl. Who did it? I don't know. But I think Gobo knows. I'm going to give him a chance to spill it, if I can ever find the little creep. You tell the police everything you know, huh? I'll be back as soon as I can. Hey, thank you! There was still no real proof regarding Gobo, but I figured I had enough facts to make a good try at bluffing. Orange, the ivory proprietor, told me Gobo was around somewhere. Game now, go on. Who are you 
Johnny kid, you don't want no game. Well, sure, sure. Let's make it a threesome. You and I and Vetters. Who's Vetters? You know Vetters? The mutual friend of yours and Van Haxie's. <clears throat> oh, Van Haxie. Yeah, Van. It's too bad you know about Van. He's dead. You don't say. Yeah, I was with him when he died. <laughs> Will you let me take my shot there, Hammer? See, I, uh, I found him in his apartment right after we'd been blasted. He regained consciousness just long enough to uh, make a statement and point that whole finger at you, Gumbo. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to worry about, Hammer. Why don't you call the police? Yeah, well, I just may do that. I just may do that. But you see, I'm the kind of a fellow that likes to be convinced. Uh-oh, you're trying to shake me down. Shake you down? No, no, not really. It was a three-way split before Van died. It can still be a three-way split. <laughs> Are you kidding? You ain't got nothing on me, have I? I ain't got nothing on you. Are you kidding? How's this? Van Haxie trained that monkey to answer doors when the buzzer rang. You and Vettas use him to get in the currency exchange. Now, how's that? <laughs> Could you prove that? Prove it? Sure. Van Haxie's deathbed statement's good enough for me. Besides, Carl recognized the monkey. <laughs> am I gonna get my cutter, am I now? Huh? Now, what do you say, you little creep? Uh, yeah, all right, sure. Yeah. Who? <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll cut you in on it. You know, it was a good idea, Gumbo. Only one thing went wrong. You looked too early. Another five minutes. Oh, another five minutes? Carl would have been gone. Nobody'd know about the monkey. <laughs> that was a good piece of brain work. <laughs> <laughs> This is always, always a lousy shot. It was close enough to suit me. Hang on, Gobo, I'll call an ambulance. Before I save me to fry, this is where I beat the rap, see? How about getting Carl off the hook? How about clearing him? Yeah, sure. It was about like you say. Why did Van get into it? I don't know, one or two in the dough. Make a play for Tirana. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. All right, now let's get this straight. Van trained the monkey, and you and Vettas staged the heist, right? Well, who killed Tom Doppel? I did. And who slugged Carl? Vettas. And who killed Van? Vettas. Yeah, sure, it had to be. So I could bluff you. Sure, you didn't know how long Van remained alive. Go over the dough. Where's the dough? Safe. Orange. Boy, boy, boy. Chicky? You saved my life, you know that? I think you've got a real reward coming. Now then, let's see what I can figure out that it would be worth my life. How about a peanut? Oh, you say you like peanuts? That's good. Come on, sit down here. Let's have a peanut cake. Huh? Oh, you like them? Oh, that's nice. Go on. Take the other one. 